In this video, we're going to be covering all of the basics on how to create simple shapes in After Effects. Great, so I have After Effects open, I've just got a very simple background layer just so we have something on our screen. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to start by looking at how we can actually create some simple shapes. So there are a whole variety of different ways you can create shapes in After Effects. We're going to be covering the essentials of the shape tools themselves and the path tool. You can also create simple shapes using tools such as masks, but we're not going to be covering that in this video. We're just going to be sticking to the basic shape tools themselves. So in order to find all of our shape tools, all we have to do is go to the top left hand corner where we have all of our tools in this panel. And as you can see, one of them looks like a rectangle. So if you just hold on that, as you can see here, we have all of the shape tools that are available in After Effects. And on the right hand side, just like in Photoshop, we have the shortcut for all of these tools, which is Q. So this is both for Windows and Mac. Anytime you press this key on your keyboard, it will automatically take you to whichever of these tools you have selected. Now, as you can see, we have a whole variety of different shapes that we can actually create. So we have the rectangle, a rounded rectangle, which is basically a rectangle, but with the corners rounded off. And then the ellipse tool for circles and ellipses and the polygon tool, which also covers triangles. And then finally, the star tool, if that's something that you want to be creating. We're just going to start off nice and simple and go for the rectangle tool. And once you have that selected, as you can see, our cursor has now changed. And all you have to do is hold and drag anywhere on screen in order to draw a rectangle. And just release once you're happy with that rectangle. Now, if you wanted to create a square instead of a freeform rectangle, if you just press Command Z on your keyboard to undo this, or Control Z if you're on Windows, and then if you just hold your left mouse key and hold Shift on your keyboard, as you can see, it now keeps our square in proportion. So instead of creating a rectangle, it will now keep it as a square. And all you have to do is make sure it's scaled to the right size for you, and then just release. And there we have our first simple shape. So there are a few key parameters for shapes in After Effects. First of all, I'm going to go to the selection tool, which is this first option next to the home house button here. If you just press on the selection tool, and as you can see, the shortcut to the selection tool is V, both for Windows and Mac again. Using the selection tool, you can actually move your shape just by holding your left mouse key. If you wanted to align your shape to either the center horizontally or vertically, vertically going this way, then if you go to the right hand side of After Effects, you have this panel with all sorts of different options. One of them will say align. If you just press on that, I already had it open. And then you just select these two middle options. So align horizontally, as you can see, it's aligned our shape horizontally. So 50% of the way from left to right. And then you can also do align vertically in order to get it in the middle vertically. These other options are if you wanted to align it to the left or to the right, top or bottom, but I'm just going to keep it centered for now. Now, one other thing that you might have is if you select your shape, your anchor point, which is this small symbol here, which is how we actually control the scale and rotation and position of our object might not be centered to the object itself, which is something that you might like to do. Now I have made a video on how to do this in much more detail. So I will leave a link to that video in the description below. But just quickly, if you just press Y on your keyboard, it'll bring you to the pan behind tool. If you select the icon itself, you can actually move it. And if you hold command on your keyboard, you can actually snap it to any of these corners or the middle of lines or even the center of your shape, which is what we want. So we can just release our left mouse button. And as you can see, it's now centered our anchor point. But once again, like I said, if you want more information on how the anchor point actually works, then do check out that video. So I'm just going to go back to the selection tool using the shortcut that we just learned, which was V. And now what we're going to do is have a look at some of the parameters that we can change when it comes to shapes. So as you can see in the top here, we have what is called the fill and the stroke. So the fill refers to what color is used to actually fill this shape in. And as you can see at the moment, it's this sort of mix between pink and purple. And then we have the stroke, which is also a color and a thickness. And this is basically the border of our shape. So the color going around the edges of our shape. Now we can change these parameters just by pressing on either of these two. So to start off with the fill, if you want to only change the color and you're actually happy with having a solid color, I'll explain what a solid color is in a minute. All you have to do is press on the color itself. And what it will do is it will bring up this new shape fill color window. 
And here we can basically select our color just like we can in Photoshop if you're familiar with that program. Then all you have to do is select a hue. So for example, say you wanted a light blue turquoisey color and just select whichever luminosity and saturation you want. Maybe something like that. And then just press OK. As you can see, the fill of the shape has now changed. I'm actually going to undo that because I think this is very bright. I'm just going to press Command Set on my keyboard once again. Now, if we don't actually want to include a fill for our shape, which you might have in some circumstances, if you want to be able to see things coming through your shape, all you have to do is press on the word fill itself. Whereas you see this small box shows there are fill options. If you press on the word itself, this new window pops up and this basically allows us to choose what kind of options we want for our fill. So we can either include no fill, in which case, as you can see, all of the color disappears and the shape becomes fully transparent. And like I mentioned before, we have what is called a solid color. And basically what this means is there'll be only one color used in the fill. And then we can have a linear gradient, which as you can see is a mixture between two colors with a single line indicating the gradient between the two. And then finally, you've also got a radial gradient, which is the same as the linear gradient, meaning that there is two colors being used. But this time, one color is created from a dot and everything around that dot will be the other color. And the transition between those colors will be between those two points. You can also change the blending mode of your fill and you can also change the opacity and decide whether you want a preview or not. But I'm just going to leave it as a solid color for now and then press OK. So those are the fill options for our shapes. And by the way, this goes for all of the shapes that we'll be creating today. And then, of course, we also had the stroke. And as you can see, whereas we have a solid color here, here we actually have a line going through it, a red line, which indicates that no stroke is currently being applied. And as you can see, there is currently no PX and PX is the dimensions indicating the width of the stroke, which means that we also have no stroke. So just like with the fill, if we actually press on the word stroke itself in order to bring up the stroke options, we can actually now see that it is set to no stroke. And then once again, we have the solid color option, a linear gradient option and a radial gradient option once again. So I'm just going to leave it as a solid color because this is the easiest to use. And we can also change the blending mode once again and the opacity too and press OK. And as you can see, it's now changed. We now have a solid reddish color that is being used for our stroke. And as you can see, these two icons are slightly different just to be able to show you what they are actually changing. The fill being the entire inside of our image and the stroke being the border or the edge. So in order to change the color, all we have to do is press on this. And then once again, we can select our color. Just to keep it nice and simple, I think I'll go for white and press OK. And as you can see at the moment, it's set to 2px, which means the stroke is a width of 2px. Now, in order to change this thickness, all we have to do is either hold our left mouse key when our cursor changes to this arrow pointing left and right. If we hold right, we increase the thickness of our stroke. And if we go left, we actually decrease it until it reaches zero. So just to make it nice and clear, I'm just going to add a stroke of around 100. If I actually want to be more precise, I can just press on the number once and then type in the number I want. And press enter. And as you can see, I now have a stroke of 100. So this is how we create a simple shape with a simple color and a stroke. Now, one or two other handy things to know about shapes when we create them is if we actually take a look at the layers panel, as you can see, what we have is a new shape layer one. So in order to stay nice and organized, all you have to do is right click and go to rename and we can call this square. Just so we know which layer is for which shape and press enter. And then as you can see, what we have is we have two main options. We have contents and transform. If you can't see these, by the way, just press on this small arrow next to the blue icon. And then when you expand that, you should be able to see contents and transform. So transform actually refers to all of the animations we can apply to the shape. But for now, we're just going to quickly stick to the contents because I want to show you what is actually included in a shape. So as you can see, we have currently a contents of a rectangle one. So you might be wondering why it says rectangle one. You can actually create multiple shapes within one shape layer. So for example, if I just quickly move this slightly to the right and create more space, if we use the shortcut that we now know to get up the rectangle tool once again, which was Q, we can actually hold and drag. And as you can see, 
When I create this new shape, there is a new rectangle also included within this same shape layer. So we can actually create as many shapes as we want within one shape layer, which is actually very handy if you want to be able to apply a whole set of animations to multiple shapes at the same time. I'm just going to remove that second rectangle just so we keep our initial one. Anytime you do do that though, you do have to realize the anchor points will no longer be centered to the original shape. Just going to quickly go back to the selection tool also. And then basically what we have under this rectangle one is we have four other options. So we have rectangle path, and this basically indicates the size and the dimensions of our shape itself. So as you can see, the current size of our square is 1184.8. And because it's a square, both numbers are the same for both the X and the Y dimensions. If you wanted to be able to change this, you can type in a new number. So for example, if I want to set it to 1000 in order to round it off, because these are linked, it's automatically going to change both. If I actually wanted to change this to a rectangle, I could just press on this link icon to undo this and press perhaps 500 for the X. And as you can see, the X has changed, but the Y has not. So it's no longer square, it is now a rectangle but this is just an easy way to be more precise with the size of your shape. I'm gonna undo that and leave that linked for now. You can also change the position and the roundness. So as you can see, the roundness actually changes the corners of our rectangle and make them more round. This is actually an easy way to transform your rectangle into a circle if you're ever looking to do that. I'm just gonna undo that by pressing Command and Z. So the next two options that we have are stroke and fill, which we've actually already covered at the top. But at the bottom, we have a few more options in order to customize these two options. So we can actually go ahead and change the color from here too. We can also change the opacity. So the opacity actually refers to how transparent our border is. So as you can see, if I set it to 0%, it's fully transparent. Whereas if it's 100%, you can clearly see it. Then we also have stroke width once again, which we'd already set here to 100px. You can also change some of the cap and join options. I won't go into too much detail. You can also create dashes, so you can just press on the small plus symbol here and this will actually add dashes to your stroke. Or if you want to remove them, you can press on this minus. Tapered, this refers to the width of your stroke at different points. I know I'm going over these quite quickly, but I will do a video on these separately and another time. I just want to show you some of the rough options that you have under shape layers. Now, like I said, then we also have the fill, so we can change the color once again and the opacity of the fill specifically if we wanted to change that. Then we also have transform, which also gives us a few transform options for this rectangle specifically. Like before, if we have two or more shapes within the same shape layer, it's actually very handy to be able to transform all of these rectangles separately, as well as transform the layer overall. So these are the contents of a shape within a shape layer. Now for now, I'm actually going to delete this layer and just show you what other shapes we can create. So if we go back to the rectangle tool, as you can see, the next option was rounded rectangle tool, which we've already covered by showing how you can actually round off the edges of your rectangle. So this is just a quick way to be able to do that without having to go into the settings of the rectangles themselves. Then we have the ellipse tool. So all of these still have the same shortcut. Once again, it just depends which one you have selected. The ellipse tool allows you to draw circles. And once again, if you want to keep it in proportion, so all sides are the same, then you once again have to hold shift on your keyboard. And if I quickly go to the selection tool and move it just so we can see it, as you can see the fill, the stroke and all the options also still apply. And the contents is very, very similar, except this time we have an ellipse. So we don't actually have the option to change the roundness of our shape. So if I just quickly delete that layer, so the other options that we also had were the polygon tool. So this is a very, very interesting shape to use. When we actually draw out the shape, it's actually going to start from the center of our polygon. So as you can see, it naturally creates a five sided polygon, which is a pentagon. But this tool actually allows us to create a polygon of any number of sides. So if I quickly go to the selection tool and just go to the contents of this shape, and as you can see, if I go to the polystar path, then we have quite a few different options that we didn't have in the ellipse or the rectangle tool. So first of all, we have points, and this actually refers to how many points we have in our shape. So as you can see, this is a pentagon, which is a five sided shape. But if I were say to change this to 10, then as you can see, we now have a 10 sided shape. Or if I want to create a hexagon, we can use six, octagon eight, and as you can see, we can just keep going until we add as many as we want. I'm not sure if there's actually a cap, but 
Obviously, the further you go, the smoother your shape will become, almost to the point where we have a circle. So once again, when you're animating, this is a very easy way to transition from a polygon to a circle. Now we can actually also go underneath five. So we can also go to three, which allows us to create a triangle. So we don't actually have a separate tool for creating triangles, but you have to create a triangle using the polygon tool. Now, like the rectangle tool and its rounded rectangle tool partner, this polygon tool also actually twins with the star tool. So you can either actually select a star tool directly from the toolbar, or you can actually change it here under the type of poly star. And as you can see, you can change this to star, in which case it now produces a star. So if I press five, it will create a five point star shape. And once again, I can actually increase this to any number of points. So let's go for eight. As you can see, I can create a star of eight points. So this is a very, very handy tool that allows us to create a whole range of numerous shapes, including stars and any kind of polygon that we want. Now, if we actually want to be able to create our own shape that isn't one of these generic shapes, such as stars, polygons, rectangles, or ellipses, I'm just going to quickly delete this layer. Then we can actually use the pen tool. Now, I am going to expect that you have some experience using the pen tool. I will be doing a tutorial on the pen tool, both in Photoshop and in After Effects very soon, and perhaps also Illustrator. But just to show you how you can use the pen tool, the pen tool is actually located to the right of our shape tools. So if you just hold and press on that, as you can see, we have a whole range of different options. We just want to make sure that the pen tool is selected for now. And this basically allows us to draw out any shape. So if I just press once anywhere, it creates a single point. And as you can see, a shape layer is created. If I now press anywhere else on our screen, just once, as you can see, a new dot is created and it's already creating a stroke between these two points. So if you ever want to create a line, then you can use the pen tool in order to create two points and create a line between the two. If I keep going, as you can see, it's going to continue that shape. And now we have a bit of fill that is also included. And I can just keep going all the way around until I have a very random shape. And if I want to be able to complete my shape, I just have to go back to the first point I created. And as you can see, our cursor changes slightly. So before it was like this, where we just have the pen itself. But when I hover over the final point, as you can see, there's a small circle in the bottom right hand corner, which indicates that I can complete our shape. Just by pressing on that once, we now have a fully customizable shape. I'm just going to quickly go to the selection tool. And as you can see, if I go to the shape layer options, the content is almost the same, except this time we don't actually have a specific name for the path. So whereas before we had things like polystar or rectangle, if I press on this, we actually have a path. And this is what is referred to as a Bezier path. And this path is basically what we drew with the pen tool. It's basically all of these points in their specific X and Y coordinates. But all of the other options work exactly the same, how to apply fill and stroke. So that's just an easy way of being able to create a custom shape. Now, as you can see, this is a very sharp shape that actually doesn't have any rounded edges. So in order to do that, if I quickly delete the shape and then quickly go back to the pen tool for which the shortcut was G. Now, if I press once anywhere to create a single point, if I actually hold and drag out, as you can see, I can create a curve in my shape. And just by going on and continuing this, just holding, I can actually create a very well rounded shape. Now the size of these two lines indicates how curved the edges will be. And just completing by once again going to the first point that I created. As you can see, this is just a quick way to be able to draw a rounded shape. So all you have to do is hold once with the pen tool and hold out in order to get these two lines coming from the center. And these lines basically indicate where the line will go from either edge of this point. So for example, if I create a new point, it will start going in this initial direction and it will follow those lines. So it will start going from here as well as start going from there. It's slightly hard to explain, so I hope it makes some sense and I will be doing a more in-depth video, but this is just quickly to show you how you can create your own shapes. If you're interested in learning how you can actually easily center the anchor point in any object in Adobe After Effects, then do check out the video in the top right hand corner of the end screen. And also do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and do subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new After Effects tutorial.